Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Now today's piece of content is kind of the, the culmination of four knives. Well, like I suppose it's really, it's three knives plus this one. So the one that we're here today to look at is the Studies and Observation Group Terminus SJ. Now just, I, 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 I've, through my contacts at, um, at, at Studies and Observation Group, You'd be fooled in thinking that SJ stood for slip joint. Now that's just a coincidence. So, the the, the chap that developed this, John Smith, who his nickname is uh, is Smelly John. So they called it the Terminus Smelly John, which just happens to be a coincidence that it's also the slip joint variant. Now I reviewed the original Terminus. I think it's about a year ago. Um, I think it was about a year ago. I should probably have checked. But for me, it was a very safe slip joint knife, mainly down to the mechanism that they used uh, for the detents. Certainly, I think to this date, as far as a detent, being able to hold that knife into place, it still is possibly the safest knife. But this is the update to that. There were some things that I thought needed to change. Um, I think the vast majority of people think thought that it needed to change, so they've pretty much made this the perfect version of the Terminus. So what I'll do, as I usually do, we'll turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look at this knife. But what I'll also do is I'll start off by looking at the other versions so that we can quickly see what's changed and then we'll get into what makes this knife its own knife. Now while I'm turning the camera around, feel free to hit like, subscribe and share, that would be absolutely amazing. If you do do that, or at least at any point during this content, I'd like to thank you now, um, it's, it's certainly appreciated. But let's take a close look at the SOG Terminus Smelly John, or Slip Joint. Okay, now to understand the Terminus SJ, I think it's important that we go to the original, which makes more sense on the journey that this knife has kind of gone along to get to the situation that it's in here. So, the original Terminus. This is still, to this day, a very good knife. It's certainly a knife that I still carry. It's certainly a knife that I see a lot of people on social media carrying as well. The, uh, the steel on this is the uh, C CTS BD1, which is a, it's, it's an average kind of mid-range steel. Certainly not one of the issues that I had with this. Uh, it's got a very nice, nice geometry. It is a little tactical looking. We've got SOG, Studies and Observation Group branding, all through the handles, uh, all through the scales there. It just had a bit of a tactical kind of vibe to it. Again, it's just a small aesthetic thing. Um, but I think for quite a few people, it was just something that, not necessarily grated on them, but it was something that they'd, they'd prefer to have changed. The main issue, I say issue kind of, I don't know, I suppose issue, yeah, issue's probably the right word. But the thing that I really, really needed to change on this really was was the, the, the geometry around the, the, the scales and the handles. For me, there just seemed to be a huge disconnect between the, the palm swell, the choil here at the front, and then this just kind of blanked out area here. So when you're holding it in hand, it feels like it should be held here if you want to use this as a finger choil, but this flat area here was almost kind of designed for that. And to stop your finger moving forward, there was, an, there was a, a, a tang that kind of came through here, or like a bolster almost, to stop your finger moving forward. Apologies for that plane flying over. And it, it didn't feel as right as it possibly could do in your hand also the um you know there's a lot of branding on here wherever you look you know you've got sog really kind of thrown into your face but this was the original so after that just reach down sog then moved on to the xt versions of these so hopefully you can see the similarities especially when you look at the geometry within um, the actual blade itself very similar uh, both with a flat saber grind although actually i think this one's a hollow saber grind uh, and then you've got that swedge towards the edge but the main difference really came down to the scales here the lines 
through the palm swell into the choil here at the front and then this extended tang point here. Now the tang point on this one was actually used as a flipper so this can be deployed in a few different ways. You can either flick, flip it out uh, and this is the, the XD lock here or you can either uh, open it and, and kind of give it a flick. Sorry this is difficult to do while I'm looking at it. You can do that. Um, or you've also got the, the thumb studs here as well so you can you can flick that out too. But the main difference really was just making these scales and the blade itself feel like they should have been part of the same knife. With the original Terminus, they just didn't seem to fit together. It's almost as though SOG had got these scales, these liners that worked with a few other knives. They got this new knife geometry for the Terminus that they wanted to use. And they were just kind of cobbled together. Now I'm sure there was probably more thought in that and that's probably a bit disrespectful for me to say it in that way. But I think for the end user when holding this knife, sorry I keep putting that back down on the floor, but when holding this knife compared to this knife, they kind of realized that. And that's where the newer slip joint comes in. So if I compare this to the original and hold these at arm's length here hopefully you'll be able to see so straight off the bat you can tell that the geometry of the scales is completely different now actually let's move up to the top bit first so the actual knife the geometry on there it's it's roughly the same as I mentioned so this is a hollow grind whereas this is a flat grind but we'll, we'll have a look at, at the uh, at more of this a little bit more in detail but for the knife the, the the stock is very similar, but when you come down to the scales, you can see that this knife just feels the flow between these lines, again, between the, uh, between the palm uh, swell and the choil here at the front. It just looks like a more cohesive, I was gonna say piece of art then, but I, I'm stuck in my, in, my, in my work mode, but it just looks like these two were designed to be the same knife, whereas, this one not so much but hopefully if I bring back in the XT version this is the XT and this is the, uh, the the slip joint you can see that this is how this has evolved going from the original terminus with the XT versions of the knives they started to change the geometry of the scales and then it evolved into the new terminus which is the terminus slip joint or you know as, as I mentioned you know secretly we all know that it's stinky John um, now I've talked long and hard about the differences between them and I really do think this is the culmination of the evolution uh, as far as this as this knife and sog have gone with these knives and I've talked long and hard about that so let's really get into the details about this newer slip joint version. The other one is a slip joint but I think really to differentiate between the terminus full stop and the terminus slip joint which is this newer iteration of this you know I, I guess that's why they've added the SJ out obviously you know secretly we know it's because of Stinky John um, but it, it's, it's to have that differentiation between the two. So as far as the blade length is concerned, this comes in at 73.7 millimeters. Now UK laws have recently changed as far as how the metric on a knife is gauged and whether or not it's legal or not. So before it was the length of the cutting edge. So that would go from the tip around the belly here to the choil. There was a high court ruling recently that the length of the knife should be should also include uh, the length of the ricasso or the non-sharpened area. So really, it does make it an actually easier measurement. It's a straight line from here to here, and it, it's it is uh, within UK uh, guidelines. So here in the UK, it needs to be three inches or less. Uh, this comes in just short of three inches, so that's fine. It's also a slip joint, so if you were wondering at this point, you know, I'll, I'll fast forward to that bit. This is a UK knife law friendly knife. Now, I know calling it UK is a slightly misnomer. There, there are different laws for England and Wales, Scotland and, and Ireland, but as a whole, generally, it's at three inches or less uh, and non-locking, so this, this is friendly. Uh, which area of the UK that you live in. As an extra note, yes, definitely here in the Kingdom of the Moorlands you can also carry this knife. Um, it's, it's within the law. 
whilst it's open from the butt of the knife all the way through to the tip here comes in at 180 millimeters when it's closed uh, from uh, from the end to end here now this is I, I did double check this because I wanted to I wanted to make sure so it doesn't include the pocket it doesn't include the pocket clip this is a deep carry pocket clip even it's extended out past the scales which I, I, I quite like when this is in your pocket if you do choose to use a pocket clip you really can't see what's in here um, but it doesn't include the extra millimeter or two that you get with the extended pocket clip and it comes in at closed 107 millimeters the blade stock thickness on this is roughly the same as it was on the original terminus and comes in at 2.8 millimeters finding a lot of knives um, I guess really with EDC when when you start off with your um, something like oh so we're just gonna have to focus when we start some with something like um, a Victorinox knife they tend to be a little bit thinner so I, th I think that's what people certainly look at when they when they judge knives to be particularly scary or kind of aggressive. Um, for me, 2.8 in, inches, that would be a, I mean, that would be a chode. Um, but uh, 2.8 millimeters is just perfect for me. With the weight of the knife plus the scales and the liners and everything in there, it comes in at 79 grams. Do apologize, it seems to be uh, trying to lock focus on that one right behind it. But uh, yes, 79 grams, which is, you know, it's your average kind of weight for a knife like this. Going into the materials, the blade stock. This is a Cryo D2 steel, so they've used a Cryo process just to make sure that they can harden that to make sure that it helps to retain uh, the edge on there. D2 is, is, is kind of a, a a personal kind of favorite of mine I think as far as a, t as a tool steel is concerned it's it's definitely well respected within the knife industry you certainly find a lot of, to of tools outside of the knife industry made from D2 mainly because of how strong it is and how also how easy it is to use in the res respect that some of your super steels if you were to uh, blunt in the knife to try and sharpen those again it can be tricky to sharpen them as a layman uh, even as myself you know I, I do find it difficult to to sharpen knives um, but whilst you're using this on a day-to-day -day basis all you need to do is if, if you strop it maybe once or twice a week it's going to stay nice and sharp now as far as sharpness is concerned this is a sharp knife so out of the box this will cut paper ink exceptionally well and will do all of your EDC needs now I do use this as an EDC knife um, at this moment in time it's reasonably clean my other the um let's bring this one out you know you can see this has definitely been used uh, and I've, I've put this through a little bit more uh, through through some harder activities um with this being a slip joint you just need to make sure that you're constantly aware that it is a slip joint but with a caveat this does still retain the same mechanism on the detent which I said it with the first one it's possibly one of the strongest detents and I think this is still one of the safest slip joints I, I seem to be tapping that quite a lot uh, but it is one of the safest slip joints I think I've ever uh, owned or you know used on a, on, a, on an EDC base but we will get back to that so blade steel so we're, we're looking at D2 cryo it does tell you on the back here, so you've got Terminus SG Cryo D2. Um, it is a flat sabre grind, so you've got that sabre here at the top with a thumb nick in there so that when you're opening this, you can kind of get a thumb into there if you wanted to do it one hand. Personally, with one hand, it's actually easier to uh, to pinch either side and then push it out. You can get just enough friction on your thumb on there once it's out underneath that saber part uh, to be able to push out. So you can still open it one-handed. I wish they had added uh, the thumb studs on there. But I know that there are certain areas around the world that knives need to be deemed as a two-handed open. So I think the ideas more so behind how they've changed this slightly is just to make sure that it's more friendly in more um, locations around the world, which I, I get. But I I'm sure, and somebody will possibly try this, you can get the thumb studs. I know you can get those screw-on brass thumb studs that will quite easily go on to here. If anybody's done that, I'd love to hear down in the comments if you've done that. Um, 
hey, leave a link or leave a website that you found your thumb stood from uh, so that people, people can check that out too. Um, it is a flat grind, as we've already mentioned, um, and then it comes to a spear point, uh, a drop point. Now, I guess you could call it a clip point, mainly because we have this swedge here at the front, and then this has been uh, ground at an angle, so I, I suppose, strictly speaking, it's a clip point, but um, they, they have it down, uh, as far as the geometry is concerned, they have this as, as, a, as, as a drop point. There is a nice trail here towards the end, so that if you wanted to sharpen it, you can make sure uh, that you're certainly not going to cut into the ricasso if you do choose to sharpen that. The action is really nice and, and smooth. Uh, the bearings in there are nice and fluid with the limitation that you know there is still quite a bit of pressure on here so that you do you, you know you, you know you're pulling this out you certainly couldn't you certainly couldn't flick open this similarly how you how you can do with some other knives moving back along the knife into the scales on the inside we have some stainless steel liners and this is where the mechanism is is within there rather than a pinch ball detent this works in a different way again i'll get back to that in a second um i thought this was g10 a, a g10 spacer in there I, I don't think it actually is i think it's just some plastic or resin then on the outside there are there is this nice g10 textured scales the textures on this are actually really nice not too aggressive not too soft it gives you just enough kind of friction on there when it's in your hand that again you, you don't feel that it's it's particularly slippy or your hand's going to move forward onto the blade um the palm swell again is really nice on here at the back i don't know if you'd want some sort of retention grip on there um i think this is just a little feature that they've added on mainly for aesthetics you're certainly not going to be trying to chop with this or, or do any of that sort of action mainly because it is a slip joint and then moving through the palm swell into a choil here at the front you get this nice stop which prevents your hand from moving forward on the original slip joint it didn't have that and that was that was kind of not necessarily a worry as far as safety was concerned it just felt disjointed that your hand kind of stopped here and then you had a good 10 15 millimeters before you got to the front of the blade but then with this extended tang that comes out at a right angle that tang didn't help anything here. Was it there to, to stop your finger moving forward? I, I, I'm just not sure. But with this one, aesthetically, ergonomically, it, it just hits all of the boxes. And then you've got a rounded part here, which then goes into the choil here, which I think will also uh, help if it is that you wanted to, um, wanted to sharpen this in the future. Uh, as far as the fixtures when this is constructed, so you have the uh, the pivot pin here at the front and then you have three uh, pins here at the end to hold the spacer and the, the liners and then the scales and everything together. This one here, it does act uh, as part of um, the construction to hold the whole thing together, but if you were to release this pin, this will allow you then to be able to change over the the, the deep carry pocket clip it is a metal deep carry pocket clip it's just a little bit more subtle a little just kind of nicer um, although this wasn't particularly bad it just reminded me of just kind of almost 90s early eight uh, uh, late 80s kind of clips it didn't really need to be that in your face um the clip on this is a lot more slimmer. It, it just suits the look and feel of this knife. Um, but you can see, hopefully you can see here on this side, there is an extra slot in. So all you need to do is, is, uh, is remove this, which I think is a T6, uh, switch that out, pop it in, uh, screw it into the other side, and then you'll be able to uh, ambi move around uh, your pocket. Uh, the pocket clip it is a just in case you're wondering yeah it is a tip up which generally I prefer to have in knives uh, when it's in my pocket I think a tip up in the fact that when you take it out it's already in a position that you can deploy the knife if it is that you you need to use this quite quickly 
Now, I, I keep mentioning this, and I, I did promise that I would get back to it, but really we're talking about the retention system here. So what you tend to find with a lot of knives is they have that retention system, especially with slip joints like this, where the scales on either sides have, have, have a spring which is forced out, and then there is... If I can do that with my hand, uh, there is like a, a little uh, ball bearing that when they slot back in, the ball bearings go into place, which then hold that knife. And that, that is your ball bearing detent that you do get in a lot of these sort of slip joints. The slip joint, or at least the mechanism in this, is different to that. So if I was, if I move this around here, hopefully you'll be able to see in the tang of the knife there, there is a recess. And then in the top, if you can see here, there is a bar. Now that bar acts as a, a, as a stop to stop it from over rotating, but instead, it has it has more of like a backspring. If I can get my hands into focus, so as this opens, the cam pushes the backspring up, and it's it's held in place. So that bar is held in place at the top and the bottom, so it lifts up. It moves round, and as it moves round, it then drops into place. This thing is bulletproof. I know somebody joked that they'd like to see me battening with this. I still don't think it's safe to batten with, but at a pinch, I would definitely batten with this and possibly with a thick pair of gloves. I'd be lying if I said that these were equal, though. The, the original Terminus, this thing is you know it's in there fast this is still in there fast if this was let's say this was 100 percent, this is 90 percent it, it still does an exceptionally good job there is a really really good positive lock when that goes into place just doing the hand tap i mean i had to hit i mean it hurt my hand I had the the pressure that i had to apply to that to get that to swing around if you're the type of person that really does worry about uh, putting slip joints through hard tasks, the OG Terminus and this new Terminus really will surprise you just on how much of a strong detent this is. Um, but it's similar. Oh, where did I, where did I put it there? So it, it's it's similar, or at least not too dissimilar to the, the the type of system that they have here. Whereas with this one, you have to physically pull this back to stop it from to to make it allow it to open. It's almost a similar mechanism. Whereas the cam that's on there is slightly rounded, and uh, the, the the detent pushes down on it so that when this opens, um, it forces that cam or at least the uh, the detent bar upwards. I probably talked quite a lot a bit there, so hopefully all that makes sense, but really, yeah, this is this is possibly one of the safest um EDC knives uh, that I've that I've certainly come across. Now I really do think that the new Terminus SJ or Slip Joint or Stinky John, Smelly John, uh, he's got a few nicknames. Um I think this is the right evolution of the original slip joint uh, or of the original terminus there was a few things ergonomically and just aesthetically that i think sog needed to update when they started with their xt line and their xt light they'd already started to introduce some of those changes to these lines and i think for them to take a step back and to address some of the again you know they're, they're very small issues um, with the original Terminus to come out with the Terminus slip joint. Um, I think they've done a very good job with this. I think for a UK legal knife, this is really, really, really nice knife. It's incredibly tough. I'll just put those down there for a second, but it's exactly what you expect from SOG. You're getting great value for money. You're getting a very good, what well, I say, a, it's not a high, super end, high steel, um, but for me, I, I certainly do rate D2 steel. It's, it's a tool steel and it's a very well respected steel, especially with the knife community and, and, and knives. For me, I find that it's, it's a good mid range steel that just works really well. You're not gonna have to keep sharpening it all the time, but if you do need to sharpen it, you certainly can do. For me, it really is those, it's the, it's the ergonomics and the aesthetics that they've changed about this that's taken 
an already very good knife and just made it so that it's almost perfect for the terminus. It's, it's certainly perfected this knife. Now what I'll do, as always, I'll leave some links in the description below so that you can see more from SARG. Um, quick note, I purchased this with my own money. Uh, this, this was sent to me from directly from uh, SARG, but it, 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 it was purchased myself. Um, I, I, I really wanted to get back to this, seeing that they'd updated it, having had the original and loved this so much. The changes... I thought it was interesting. I thought you guys would certainly appreciate it as well. Now, as I say, I'll leave their links below. I'll leave some of my social media links below as well so that you can see more from me. I tend to be on um, YouTube. I am on YouTube, sorry. I tend to be on Instagram more than I am on Facebook. Um, but yeah, you can follow me on there and you'll get to see stuff that's coming up as well. So yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. Don't forget, stay safe, stay more under, and stay EDC under EDC now. Today's piece of content is all about chicken. Chicken! Chicken! Put this back between my legs without stabbing my penis. Oh, that was so close. I am going to end up cutting my knob off. Well, this is definitely going in the bloopers. You spend, how, how long have I been doing this now? Four years? Yeah, four years I've been doing this. Never thought about setting this camera angle up with my tripod. All this time I've been wrestling with it, putting my legs through it, trying to climb through it. Put the tripod there, put the camera here. Honestly, now this isn't a male thing. Sometimes you just wanna kick yourself in the balls for being an idiot. Give me a woman's thing. Give yourself a good kick in the ovaries just for being an idiot. Damn it. All this time. Damn it. Anyway, hopefully we'll be able to get some better camera angles and not have to worry about me kicking the kicking the tripod in future. Well, you know, you live and learn. Shame it's only four years into my YouTube career that it took me this long to learn. Anyway, moving on. It's a beautiful knife though, isn't it?